so much. Welcome to Black Belt Interviews with me, Master David Hodson. I'm absolutely delighted and uh, thrilled to say that I'm joined today by Grandmaster Bimbos um, in Italy. Mm -hmm. Is that right, sir? Yeah. How are you? Uh, fine. <laughs> Whereabouts in Italy are you, sir? I'm uh, located in Rome. Oh, wow. Yeah. I started uh, here in 86. I came here to, um, to be the coach of the Italian team. And at that time, I was also coach of the Dutch team. So I needed to make a decision uh, for the world championships that were held in 87 in Greece. So I said, okay, let me go for a new experience. And so we put someone else at the, as the Dutch coach, but of course I was still involved in that. So I started here and that went on till 1990. I came almost every month for a few days. And then in 1919, April 1919, I decided it was enough to go up and down and I moved here. So it's 31 years I'm wow. here now. So, yeah. so you're fully Italian now, sir? Yeah, I feel, I, I feel 90% Italian and 10% Dutch. Sometimes the Dutch uh, humor and the Dutch way of thinking comes comes up, but uh, no, no, I, f I feel really Italian. I, I I really like it here. Yeah. And the climate must be lovely. Uh, it's, the weather. The weather today is not too good, but yesterday we had sun. I was in in my my garden. Today it's uh, raining, but it's also okay. It's good for the for the for the nature to have some water. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned you 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 came to Italy in nineteen eighty six. Um, so before then, born in uh, Appingdon. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm born in Appingdon. It's a, it's a small place, still a small place, uh, about maybe 15,000, maybe 20,000 inhabitants. I'm born there and I stayed there until 1980, uh, 1990. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 And, and you discovered Taekwondo in 1968. Uh, yeah, 68, maybe 69. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think it was late 68. Anyhow, it's a long time ago. <laughs> well, I remember it, that day. It's the day I was, the, the year I was born. So okay, all right. <laughs> it's a long time, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, so you were 15. Uh, you did some football beforehand, soccer. Yeah, my father, I was nine. I, I didn't want to do nothing. Uh, my father said, that it's time that you do some sports. So there's only one sport in Holland, which is important, that's soccer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he brought me on his uh, moped, on his Solex. He brought me to the, to the football and uh, I was not really a team man. But anyhow, okay, so I joined them and I, I played soccer until maybe I was 15. Yeah, it was always a team sport, but it, it, that was not really mine until I met Taekwondo. That was is a pure individual thing, so that uh, that was okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you were fifteen. Taekwondo in nineteen sixty eight. It's, it's quite new, isn't it? Still, still yeah. in the early years. It was it was the beginning, no? Because uh, uh, Taekwondo was introduced in Holland in sixty six. Wow. So I consider my, myself as one of the oldies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm I'm old. So that's very simple to understand. <laughs> so uh, when I went to the gym, I was 15, 16, more or less, and I entered this gym, and it was all elder people. Yes. Okay. Because the Taekwondo was not for kids. It was not for youngsters. It was for elder people. And most of those people that came to go Taekwondo maybe were in judo or maybe in jujitsu. They did maybe some martial arts but nothing, or maybe uh, ex karate people also possible yeah. because my, my, my instructor, he was at that time a brown belt when I started because we had no red belts at that time. He okay. was a brown belt. Yes. And, and he, uh, he came from judo. He was a black belt in judo and he, he did a speedy course, I think of Taekwondo. I don't know how, how they did that. Yes. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. It still happens anyhow. So he got his, <laughs> he got his, uh, he brown belt and he uh, started to teach. So my my first instructor, he was a brown belt. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And then, so it was was it pretty raw kind of training then? Was it? Uh... Uh, okay. My first lesson, I went 
because I came back from football, I was on a bicycle and I saw some people uh, training in, in, a, in a white kimono. So I went there to uh, just have a look. And I said, uh, may I come next time to, to have a training? Yeah, and the instructor said, don't worry, you come next time, in two days time you come. And so I went there, uh, we did some warming up. And then it was one blue belt. He, he took me uh, to the side and we did about, well, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes, only going up and down with a punch, with a punch in the low block, in the low block, in the middle block. And that was nothing for me. Right, right. And that I found that very, very boring. I did not like that at all. So I didn't go again. I stopped there. But then uh, two months, three months later, I had a friend, he was from the Molukan. Indonesian guy, because we had a Moluccan, let's say, a family street of all Moluccan in our, let's say, Indonesian people in yeah. our town. And I was very friendly with those people. In fact, they were my friends. Yeah. And uh, this, this guy, he, this friend said to me, uh, you like to come with me this evening to do Taekwondo? I said, oh, no, no, I went one time that I did not like it. And he said, because we did this and this. He said, well, it, my, my brother, he was also brown belt. Brown belt normal. My instructor was brown belt with three white stripes. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, why don't you come with me? My brother teaches five kilometers away from Appingham in Delft Sile. And uh, we do a lot of fighting, a lot of sparring and this and that. And I said, what is that sparring? Oh, well, uh, fighting. Okay. I said, okay, I come with you. And that was it. I did the, right. I did the training. We did one hour of sparring. Well, whatever sparring, I, I could do nothing. But anyhow, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. We paid 25 cents, Gilder cents at that time. So it may be 10 euro cents yeah. for each lesson. And I joined and I liked it so much. And this guy was teaching three times a week. So I went three times a week. Then uh, after a few months, maybe four or five months later, there was a grading. Yeah. Yes, I was training three times a week, but the other time, two times or three times uh, in the week, I was training myself also with my friends. So I was in three months, four months time, I was ready for my green belt. So I did my green belt. Can you imagine? <laughs> of course, in that time, there was only one grading per year. Right. So I did the grading with my instructor. He was in that time a brown belt. Yes, yes. So there was no black belt. So we did just the grading and that's it. And uh, I became a, a green belt. And from that time on, so we talk about maybe 1969, beginning 69, I trained all my life every day. Wow. No stop. Yeah, yeah, so, so you were in good shape as a 15-year-old anyway. You were fairly good fitness-wise. Oh, good. yes. I, 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 I always, uh, well, in, in football, I, okay, I did, I was a youngster, so what, what do you know about life? Nothing. But, okay, we had good trainings, had physical training with the football, so I, I was quite prepared. And when I started Taekwondo, the trainings were always very tough. Also physically tough, I mean, about hardening, you know, that this, this yeah. way. It, it was more a martial art at that time. Yes. Uh, also sparring, there was no equipment at that time in those years. Until 1973, I never knew about safety equipment. So all those years we did fighting, just bare hands, bare feet, and that was it. It was nice. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was contact. It was... Oh, yeah, it was contact. But on the face, of course, not too much. I mean, yeah. you, you went with a punch to the face, but you're not really wanted to, to hit the person. Yes, yes. But on the body, it was it was more or less full contact. I mean, it was... And your physical size compared to the others? Smaller? I, I was, I was all, like I am now, I was always between, at that time, I was 62 kilograms. So yeah. I was always a lightweight. In my career as a competitor, I was always lightweight. Then when I stopped, I, I never, uh, and now let's say 68, 69, I never been over 17 in all my life, 70 kilogram, always under. And I try to ma maintain that weight. Is that easy for you, sir? Or is it something you have to dedicate? Or it's just how you are? Uh, first of all, I care uh, about my physical shape, first of all. Second, second of all, I think the food, what we have here in this country, uh, also gives you a possibility to eat very healthy. Yes. And, and also, uh, first of all, uh, we are not big eaters, not even myself and not even my wife. So what she cook is, is a little bit and I have to be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's just easy it going. Is. Yeah, yeah, so not too much indulgence, just- No, no, no. Of course, you know, like in, in Holland, there's always on the table the cake or there is some sweets 
But in my house, my wife knows. If she buys the sweets, I finish everything in one day. If there's a cake like this, I finish in one day. So there's, there's not, in this house, you don't find nothing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so you, you lightweight, always been that sort of uh, build. Uh, that's made you yeah. very quick, very flexible. Were you flexible yeah. at the beginning, sir? No, when I started taking I wasn't flexible at all because I came from football. But uh, in the gym, there was one guy. He was uh, also, I mean, he was maybe brown belt. Yeah. And he could make the splits. I mean, forward, backward, sideways. He could do everything. And I could not stand that. that this guy was more better than me. And luckily, one day I, 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 I bought a book about stretching from Dan Anderson. It was in English. It's a very old book. I still have it, I think, somewhere. Anyhow. And uh, so I, I started to adopt a little bit this, uh, this kind of stretching, this static stre uh, uh, um, stretching. And I, little bit, little by little, also by training, of course, every day, uh, I, I make some progress. Then I found a book about from Tom Kurtz, which is a Polish guy. He has the dynamic stretching. I adopted also the adopted, uh, 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 dynamic stretching, which I do much more than the static one now, because the dynamic is much, much better. And uh, so that make me quite fle flexible. Let's say I can do the splits in the morning when I wake up. It's not a problem. Even uh, yeah. I'm almost 69, but it's not a problem. Wow. But you have to do it every day, yes, the sir. stretching. Not one day, yes, one day, no, because I'm tired, I'm sick. No, every day you have to do some stretching. So I do that. Yeah, yeah. Very much, sir. So for so someone that's trying to develop their stretch, like you say, um, you stretch every day. But this is not forcing, this is uh, relaxing. No. Just uh, do the dynamic one. I mean, if you make a coffee in your kitchen, you just um, throw your legs a little bit to the sides. Just be busy. I mean, why wasting your time? When I watch the television, I have my legs there, both of them. And my wife comes and said, you're busy again, you know? Because <laughs> first of all, first, there are reasons for, for why you do these things, of course. First of all, it's your passion. And second of all, it's your job. Yes, and third of all, you want to be number one. That's it. That's, that's my character. That's my mentality. As yeah. long as I can, I want to keep those three things always high up in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, sir. And uh, so your early days led you to become the Dutch champion eventually? Yeah, I, I won seven times in a row the, the Dutch championships, and then I was lucky to win the, the Euros in 1976 in, in Rotterdam. It was the first Euros. And uh, of course, at that time, already I had my gym, my, my own gym my, in my town. Yes, yes. Uh, so I, I became European championship. Then I did one more tournament in Holland, and I became champion in Patton because I have many students that were in my category also fighting. I didn't want to fight my students. Uh -huh. uh, no, no, because you can't be selfish, you can't be egoistic, you have to give chance to other people. So I, I performed the pattern and then I said basta, I finished my career here and I put all my efforts for my students to, to go on with them and to concentrate on my team. And in that time I still went to my uh, original instructor uh, that was gr teaching in Groningen, 30 kilometers away from me, so I went there always three times a week. And yes. I had my gym uh, three times a week. And on Sunday, I did my own thing. So I was always busy. Yeah, yeah. Were you working as well, sir? Did you have a, did you have a job at the time? Well, also this, I've, I've been a little bit lucky in my life because I 17, I finished high school. And I found a job in a big company as an administrator because I'm an administrator. But I was a client in a, in a, in a cafeteria like a lunch room, let's say, in, in my town, where I went almost every day to have a coffee or to have some fries, or whatever. And my father, because I was born in a big restaurant, restaurant, my, my father had a restaurant with bowling, very big restaurants. Okay, yeah. My father said, uh, uh, he was planning to buy this uh, cafeteria. I don't know, is this English, what I say, cafeteria? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. He said, I want to do that. What do you think that you and your sister are in charge of this uh, cafeteria, so you don't have to go to work for someone else, you work for me. And I said, so, so I was 70, hardly 18. Yeah. And I said to my father, okay, that's, yeah, I do that. And so with my sister, we agreed, and we had two guys in the, in the kitchen working. And every day, 
Yeah, and I was, let's say, only 18 years old, but every day I had about 500 students coming from schools to my cafeteria, and I make a lot of money. <laughs> but at 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the afternoon, I closed. And my father said, why are you closed? Because I need to go to the gym. I had my gym. Yeah. I, I want to train, and I want to go to the gym. I said, you're stupid. You can make so much money. and You work 10 years, and you don't have to work all your life. I said, no, but that's not what I want. Yeah. I want, I want to train. So this went on, and also on Saturday, of course, I, I needed to be open until 12 in the night. I did it for some months, and then I closed also the Saturday. Uh, on the Sunday, I was open until 1. I did it for some months, and I closed also the Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and my father, yeah, okay. Well, and then after two years, I was 20. My father said, uh, it's time that you uh, be the owner of the, of the cafeteria. You give me money, and you be the owner. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I said, okay, so uh, I, got, I got some money, I lent some money, I gave my father the money, and my mother and father said, at this moment, I will sell my uh, restaurant, and I'm going to work in the kitchen with mama, in, in the kitchen, so you don't need the personal anymore, so you don't have to pay them. Wow. Yeah. So my father, he sold his business, and he came to work for me, <laughs> me in the kitchen with my mother. Yes, yes. Uh, so I did it for two year, more year, years, but of course I was more and more active. I had my, then I started my own gym in Uppingham. I had a lot of students. Yeah. So I became more and more active and, uh, and, and so on and so on. So I said, uh, no, I'm going to sell uh, my business and I'm, I tried to work as an administrator somewhere. So I sold it. I got a job as an administrator for, in a big company for one and a half years, I did it. And then I moved to Groningen for another company that was selling parts of cars. Okay. And I became head administrator in this company. And I did it for about, I think, 10, 11 years. Yes. So yes. I went up and down. <laughs> and at that time, when I started there, I started my gym in Groningen. So at that moment, I had the students uh, that also came to Uppingham to train with me because I was not in Groningen. I only trained with my instructor. Yeah. But the story is that why did I start in, in Groningen with my gym? Because my instructor had a, a fallout with me and he sent me away. He didn't want to have me in the gym anymore. Uh, I still do not know, know the reason. It's a long, long time ago. I still don't know the reason, but he was very angry. And I became also very angry because he treated me very, very bad in front of all the students. So right. after uh, this happened twice, and then I knocked on the door. He said, I said to him, sir, I'm sorry, but I'm not going back here anymore. Also, I know you don't want me because uh, maybe I'm a troublemaker for you. I don't know, but I will not come back anymore. Well, I will open my own gym in Groningen. And I'm very sorry to tell you, sir, but you treated me very, very bad that in one year time, you will not have any student anymore because they will all my, be my students. They will all come to me. And it happens. Right, right. So I, I opened my gym in Groningen and I had students like Hank Meyer. I had uh, Wayna Tapilato. All these guys that were famous uh, and still are still very famous because Hank Meyer is in WTF world champion. He became world champion. Yes. Top, yes. So you know the top below, the, the brother and, and the cousins. So they were all my students at that time. So I, I went up and down to Uppingham to Groning to work and to have my gym. I had my gym there. So that went on for a long time also. But also everything finished, of course. I went back to my own town. Open, reopen again and not the gym. Okay. Anyhow. But those days of teaching, you know, when your school was in such a doing so well, it was good times, sir. Good times. Oh, you know, I was teaching, uh, let's say, five times a week, four hours a day, because I, I was after my job, because I finished my job at five. I went to the gym that was uh, two kilometers from my from my job. I, I, I clean the gym and at a quarter to six, I open the gym. At six o'clock, I start to teach to 10. 10, 15, I close. I take my car, drive back home half an hour. Quarter to 11, I'm home. Dinner is ready because I have to eat something. I sleep and the next morning at seven, I'm in a car to go back to my job. Wow. So I, have, yes, so I know what it is to suffer and to work and to have the gym. But okay, you are young and, and you want to do the best and I really want to have my school be number one in Holland. I became number one in Holland with my students. I always have a big drive in things. When I do something, I just bite on it and I go for it. That's yeah. Always. Yeah, fantastic, sir. So you uh, had this success as a competitor yourself. 
became European champion. This is around 1976. Um, and you're running these schools, very popular. Uh, so when did you take the, did you come away from work, full-time work at some point and just dedicate to Taekwondo or? Yeah, well, um, after, when I, did, when I decided, um, so I was working at this administrator for let's say 10, 11 years in this big company. But then I started to come to Italy. Uh -huh. So but I, I was working full time. So every uh, one time a month, I needed to take two days off from work because I left on Friday and I came back on Monday from Italy and I was teaching Saturday, Sunday. So I spoke with my boss. And I said to my boss, listen boss, uh, if it's possible, I would like to work uh, half time. Yeah, so let's say only in the morning and be free. And he said, oh, you know, William, this is not possible because you just do, just do such a good, a good job. We, we cannot miss you, this and that. Okay, so it became, it became very stressful because I, I could not handle the full job, my gym, and going one time a month to Italy. It was very stressful. It was very, it was very hard. So one day I said, okay, that was on my 35th, I was 35, on my birthday, I came home and I said to my wife, I have very good news. <laughs> she said, yes, yeah, yeah, I quit my job. She said, what? <laughs> what? Yes, I quit my job. I don't want to work, go there anymore because I want to concentrate full on, on the gym and on, and on uh, going to Italy. Okay. Yeah. But that was done. And uh, well, that's more or less the story about uh, yeah. quitting my job and being, let's say, professional. So 35, I'm now, I'm getting 69. It's 34 years ago, more or less, that I always am only in Taekwondo, being professional in Taekwondo. That means I have always been working or for my national organization. Then I started to work for the ITF International as a tournament director, umpire director, secretary general, treasurer, di director, whatever, any job I had. And, uh, and of course, in Italy, I, I'm, I'm here, uh, technical director from 1992 until today, I'm technical director. So I just do, do all the teaching here. I'm not in the board of directors. I've never been in the board of directors in Italy. I don't want to be in the board of directors because I don't want to be a person to be in comment of, the, uh, of myself. So I just teach and that's it. And uh, I have some small compensation for that. My work is, my wife is also working for the, for our federation as a with communication, social life and everything like that, social media. So we do quite well, let's say like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So that time when you quit the job, you said it's good news, your wife wasn't too sure. <laughs> but is, oh, but that, you knew to yourself that it was the right thing? Yeah, it, it was the it was the right thing because uh, you know you, you feel yourself that okay the the job is always something you know you have the job you have your steady income you know with this income you can do this and that you have to work eight hours a day okay and then you lose about two hours for traveling or one hour and a half let's say like that of course you want to do it all your life if you are a sportsman or you are in sport I don't think so yeah so I make that decision and of course. Uh, that was in my first marriage, let's say my, my first wife. She was also in Taekwondo, she was also an aerobic trainer and she was also very active in our gym. So that was never a problem. So that, that was okay, that was okay. And but of course you, you lose some financial background yeah, because you, you know, yeah, yeah. Your, your insurance and you have to pay this and you have to pay that. And well, <laughs> it was not easy, but okay, we made it, we made it. Yeah, yeah. and then. Uh... You moved to Italy, Italy became more frequent for you. Um, and you knew at some point you'd be settling there. Did you feel that way about Italy or? Well, I, I, I moved for two reasons there. Uh, I, I went to my second marriage with an Italian lady. We are still together. So I'm, you can see I'm a good boy. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and of course, also to work, uh, try to be full-time uh, instructor in Italy. That was not easy because I came here, of course, with nothing. Because I left everything in Italy and in Holland. I mean, I left everything. I left the gym. I left. I left everything. I came just with two bags with clothes, wow. with no money, nothing. I just came here to stay with my second uh, 
marriage, let's say, with, yeah, with yeah. my wife. Of course, yeah, yeah. And then, then my, my wife, she, her name is Tiziana, she said, so what are we going to do? She said, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to teach for, of course, for Fritai, our federation, but that's not enough, of course, because can I live with that? So we started the gym. We rented the gym that was closed for some months. And so we took over that gym and I started to teach. My Italian was not really good, but my mentality was the worst because when Dutch mentality, I could not manage the Italian mentality because oh. Italians are not Dutch. In Dutch, the people come on time. The people train 11 and a half months a year. If it's sunny day, they still come to train. And in Italy, it's not like that. So it was very hard to build up the gym. And it, after one year, we closed it down because that was too, too, too stressful. Yeah, so yeah. I started to teach in three gyms. So I had my motorino, my motor, motorcycle, let's say like that. And I went from one to the other one. I had two gyms at the, per day. So two, and, and I had in one area in Rome, I had, the, let's say from five to seven. And I took my motor, motorino, I went to the other gym and I taught, was teaching from eight to nine or eight to 10. And so I built up my, my groups, my, 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 the number of people to make a good living. And that, that was working well. And I, I, I really lo loved that because I had these three gyms and they was working well. I managed to get some black belts in time. They were helping me. So uh, that, was, that was okay. And, I, and we still, uh, still, I still do that. I, I don't have my own gym. We still teach in gyms here, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, sir. So, uh, yeah, life was simple then. It's a bit like a, it's a bit like the stories of the pioneers turning up in a country, yeah. very little thing. Yeah, of course you have to be lucky because my, my wife she was working with her father in a big company, so the finance, financial background was there, so that was already something. Uh, of course, that that was that was good. It was there. And uh, yes, so the time passes, the time passes. And then, of course, in the ITF, I, I've been working after the, the, let's say, the general shape passed away. Before already, let's say, in the 90s, 92, I started to work for, for ITF. Yes, sir, yeah. Uh, 94, I, I took over, let's say, the tournament and umpire uh, business in the ITF uh, from Malaysia World Championships. So that was the beginning of my full career, let's say, in ITF, working only for ITF. Yes. And yes. of course, always for, for my Federation in Italy, of course, yes. So was that, um, was that, did that come from General Che himself? Did he appoint well, you to these things or was it through other secretary or? No, because you know, everything has a story, no? <laughs> no okay, it started in 92. In 92, we had the European Championships in Poland, Kozolin. And it was still the beginning, you know, of, of, of having good tournaments with a lot of people and getting organized and to have good committees and have the right people in the right spots. I, I was at that time, I, I was still um, the, the coach of the Italian team. But in the last day, they, they, helped, they asked me to, to help to organize it, the, 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 the Euro. So I started also to help a little bit to organize. Then in 1993, we had the, Euro, the World Championship for Junior in Russia, in Moscow. It was a disaster, it was terrible. And I was there as official. I was not coach, I was just official. So I was, I was sitting there in the, in the Tribune, looking at the championships. And the first day it went on to three o'clock in the night. It was terrible, terrible, there was nothing. So the second day I was sitting in the Tribune again and then Grandmaster McCallum came to me. He said, uh, Mr. Boss, yes, sir. General Choi asked for you. Oh, God. He said, what did I do? <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I, I'm just sitting here watching the game. Yes. Why are you asking yes. for you? So I, I start to sweat. My stomach started to turn. <laughs> <laughs> I was so afraid. I was so afraid. Yeah, but what does he want from me? So I went there. And he was sitting on the couch. And I said, take one. Said, he said, at ease, I stay at ease. He said, uh, win boss. Yes, sir, take one. He said, take over. He said, sir, what do you mean? Take over the organization. He said, uh, what do you mean with that? He said, you are in charge of, as, as the chairman of the, of the tournament. 
He said, what about all those Korean people and the Russian people sitting there? Do what you want. Okay. So I went there <laughs> and uh, I said, okay, everybody, you can go because I know how to make friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I took over the tournament as a chairman of tournament and umpire. And I called all the coaches, of course, and all the people that were involved there. And I called them and said, listen, this is the, what happens. I am in charge now. So I'm really sorry that, uh, of course, I cannot make a wonder here. I cannot change the whole world, but I, I would I would like to try to to make a tournament better with, with all your help. And said, of course, of course, sir, we we understand that. So everybody was trying to do their best. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sitting there at a the table, and this uh, this organizer, this guy, this this Russian organizer, not the one we have now, and this one is terrible. It's it's really good, yeah. Master Lazarus, but this guy was sitting there. And I said to him, so I can have some coffee. He looked at me like that. I said, I have no coffee. Okay. So I said, how about a Coca-Cola? He said, sorry, sir. We have no Coca-Cola. I said, how about, well, I said, what do you have then? He said, we have some water. Okay, okay, it's okay. <laughs> Bring me some water. Okay, well, it was so unbelievable, terrible. <laughs> okay, but now, now the, the, the real story starts. In the, in the World Championship, we always have breaking in special techniques. Yeah. So we have people from Canada, from Europe, from United States there, these juniors. I mean, these are juniors, they are kids, no? Yes. They are, were only there for jumping or breaking. So I said to the guy, okay, it's time to prepare one ring for, uh, for power breaking. He looked at me, power breaking? He said, yeah, yeah. Please put the machines. We have no machines. Right. No power breaking. I said, how about special techniques? He said, we don't have special technique machine. I said, so we have no power breaking and we have no special technique machine? No, we do not have. Can you imagine? You go to world championships yeah. and they didn't have the material because of course I was not in charge. I couldn't check before. Yeah, yeah. Because normally I have, a, I have a list long like this to, to check with the organizer if they have everything. Nothing there. Okay, the tournament finished. On Monday morning, we are in front of the hotel, Italian team, some other teams, and we are waiting for the buses. No buses. <laughs> and, the, and the time passed, and the time passed. So we took taxis. I don't know, we have maybe 20, 30 taxis. They came to us and they bring us to the airport and we were late and we were late and we were suffering and we were sweating and we just whoo, went through the, the to get our flight it was a nightmare never again but finally good news i got a letter from itf that i was in charge to organize the world championship in malaysia and yeah. there there i think i think i did a good job because concerning all the comments that still are on the ITF oh, yeah. websites yes, yeah, yeah. or in the, the people say it's still one of the best championships we ever had. And so I'm, I'm really very pleased with that. And I learned a lot in that championships about the rules and about behaviors and also learned a lot about myself. So yeah. that was a good, what, wow. that was really good. Yeah, fantastic. So <clears throat> you have to pick up from something that was not run very well at all, really, and deal with all these challenges and problems. and. So yeah. if we if we if we look back now, I, I always am try to be very honest with myself. When I, when we look back before '94, and you look at all those championships that we had, I mean '94 we had a world championship in Montreal. I didn't go. I was selected. I didn't go because I had to pay my own flight. So I said to the Dutch uh, organization, "No, I'm not going. If you want me to fight for 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 the Dutch team, you pay my flight in my hotel, everything." They had no money. I said, "So I don't go." I went to 78 Oklahoma, it was terrible. I mean, in that time, maybe people say, okay, it was good. I didn't go to 81 in, in Argentina because our organization was not organized for that and they didn't want to pay the flights. So we did not go. So if I look back and then we go to, to Glasgow, 84, the world championship in Glasgow, that was unbelievable, mamma mia, what a mess, what a terrible, terrible championship, mamma mia. And I lost some very good competitors. They didn't want to do Taekwondo anymore about what happened there. 
it was so disorganized, it was just terrible. So if we look back to the past, we, we have to have a look inside ourselves now, not only me, but most of us, yeah. and look back to a, a period that we were not capable to change something. Maybe for our, our, our interest, maybe because we are not in charge, or maybe we did not have the experience. Yeah. yeah. So if I see sometimes these tournaments from the past, and I see tournaments that we have no tatami, and we talk about just before 1990, that's, there were tournaments with no tatami. You just have some tape on the floor that was the ring. Right. That's right. I mean, this is just, and then people are still proud of it. They have organized a world championships with no tatami. I cannot understand that. So anyhow, it went better after that, that period in Malaysia for, for luckily. Yes, so Malaysia, how did you turn that around? How did you make that so well run? What was your strategy? How did you create that? Well, I think uh, I, I put unbelievable efforts. First of all, I did the umpire uh, course and I make all the new rules. Okay, I, I need to tell you something about the rules. The rules in ITF were not clear at that moment. I mean, they were not professional, they were not clear. So in 1992, I uh, made all the new rules for ITF. I think some many masters that are still around in the world, not with us, are not, doesn't matter, they, they practice ITF with all respect, doesn't matter where they are, I respect everybody. So they know about the story. The story is that in 1992, I went by train from Rome, 16 hours to Vienna, to deliver my new rules, my book of like this, yeah, yeah. all the photographs, how to judge, how to sit, how to stand, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the modification of the rules that were no good with the warnings, were not good with the, whatever. And I was received by Master Grandmaster McCallum and Vienna Che. Okay, so I came to the Stolgasse, to the headquarters. I came inside, the general was there. He gave me a big hug, it was very nice. He always remember those nice things, of course. He said, hi, Mr. Boss, had a good trip? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, have a seat, show me your job. Okay, so I, uh, I sit down and uh, I put, I'm so proud of myself, you know. I mean, I worked months with my wife because he's, she was better in English than me to make this manual, big manual to make all the, okay, so I sit down <laughs> and the general said, uh, okay. So he took the book and he, he went like this, no? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. said, so, okay, the changes are in, written in, in, in fat letters. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this is the change. Why you change this? I said, for this and this reasons. Okay, makes sense, he said. No, we went on, we went on, we went on. So we went through all the, all the book. He said to me, that, that's a, a, a big job you did. Said, yes, sir. I have the book here. Wow. Let's say I have, this is the book that I said yet. So he had the book, I said, and so he did. Very nice. But we changed nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, that was it. Right. So I said, take one. I left the Stolgasse headquarters, went back to the train, took the train 16 hours back home. And that was it. But as in 1994, I became the chairman of the tournament. I, I could not change the rule, but I changed the rules by having the consent of the coaches. Okay, so there were some things in the rules that, that, that were not good. So in the coach meeting, I said, you know about this rule, it's written this and this. What do you think that we change it with your consent and we all write and always change this rule? And, and everybody was agreeing. So little by little, during some world championships, we managed to adopt the rules for the better. So that's a more a, a story about <laughs> changing the rules <laughs> without General Choi knowing about it. Let's say. Well, I, I guess he must have been very pleased with the tournament in Malaysia. Oh, yes. Because it was televised, wasn't it? I remember seeing it on there. Yeah, it was, it, it was a of course, also the place, no? But I, I, I tell you a nice story about it. Because everything has a story, everything has, has, has a memory, no? Yeah, yeah. So I, I was in charge, so Master Grandmaster Sabrisa Lay, 
he, he was the chairman of, of the of the of the tournament, let's say the tournament of the organization, because he had the connection with the prince of, of Terengganu province. So I came to uh, to Kuala Lumpur by plane. And uh, so he was there picking me up. He brought me to the Hilton Hotel. We had some food together. We had a good chat together. We had a good time together. We did some sightseeing together because I was a few days before. And, and we went through everything what he should have done. It was all okay. So then a few, so that was okay. Then a few days later, we had the plane to go to Terengganu, was on the other side of Malaysia. So we came there. So he brought me to the venue. We go to the venue. I come inside. There was nothing in this venue. There was nothing. And I said, so this is the venue for the World Championships. He said, yes, yeah, so what's wrong with this? I said, sir, there's nothing. There's nothing. I said, no, nah, but you fix it. You are the chairman of the tournament. You fix it. He said, he said I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a labor worker. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm just the chairman of the tournament who makes the draw, who makes the ring councils, who make who talks with the umpires, who talks with the coaches and makes the tournament running. But yeah, now tomorrow morning, you have 120 people working for you to fix the hall. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice story. Yeah? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, you know, everything is such a beautiful story. So the next day, these people were there and they started to decorate the hall in a so fantastic way that they only know, to, know how to do in Malaysia. I mean, the flowers everywhere. It was mm -hmm. it was such a beautiful venue. They fixed all the the the, the toilets, the, the changing rooms. It was fantastic. But we, we missed one tatami. We had a problem. <laughs> we, we, must, we missed one tatami. Oh, so yeah. I had a problem. Yeah, we, I, I think we had five or six rings, and we yeah. missed one tatami. <laughs> then, you know, we fixed the problem. <laughs> oh gosh, 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 gosh! But it was really good. But yeah. during the tournament, of course, you learn a lot of things because it was my first big, uh, let's say, achievement and my first big, big uh, work yes. for the ITF. And so I, I learned a lot. It's, it was not easy to work with the masters that were higher in degree with me because I was, at that time, I was a sixth degree. Right, right. So I was dealing with masters with seven degrees and some eight degrees. That, that, that was not easy, but okay. Yeah, yeah. So you had a big responsibility there, didn't you? A lot of weight on your shoulders, but uh, yeah, you, but you delivered. Uh, I, I'm just a tough guy, you know. I I don't care who, if I do my job and I and I, I I do my job well and the people are pleased with me. That I do not care that an eight degree comes to me and wants to tell me the story. I just send them off, and I did that in yeah. front of everybody. I did not care at all. So. The tournament was fantastic. Everybody ha was happy, and that's that's it. Was that an early experience for you with General Che, or had you had discussions with him before then? Or no, I I met the general the first time in 1973 or four when I was in Germany, because I went to Germany, uh, let's say two times uh, a year, by with my car. Yes, yes. For one big training with uh, Grand, Grand, with Master Kim Kwan Il, he was at that time a seven degree. He was the highest ranking Korean master, I think, besides uh, Grand Master Riki Ha in, in, in Europe, let's say in Germany. Yes. So I, I always went there to train and to learn more because, well, I could not learn too much in, 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 in Holland. So I went always there. So one day I was a first degree, so it must be 73. We were in, in, this, in the gym of this um, master, Kim Kwan Il. And uh, so we were training. And then we had to stop. And he said, uh, everybody stop, uh, take one. So hands are relaxed. And then the door opened. I didn't know Jenna Che at that time. So the door opened and a very small man came inside. It was a Korean man. It, it was him, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I didn't know. So he, he you walk past by and every, we were all looking, we were all looking. And some people said, So he went in front of us and uh, Master Kim, uh, he introduced in you know, me, the founder of Taekwondo, Mamma Mia, that was, that was, that was the day. <laughs> <laughs> that was the day, you know, yeah, yeah. that you see the general in life. I mean, no, no, that was really fantastic. Anyhow, he, he said, uh, everybody sit down. We said, we sit down. 
okay, you know, we sit down, he starts to talk, he starts to talk about Europe, and he starts to talk about Holland. Ah, my ears do like this, bro. <laughs> so he says something about Holland, about it was needed in Holland to have a fourth degree there because of the gradings and about the status in the uh, in, in, in Holland, it was important to have a fourth degree. So he was talking about one guy, that guy was Jan Willem Stoker. Jan Willem Stoker, he was a third degree, he was a big man, he was a strong man, but he didn't know the pattern. He didn't know nothing about patterns. So the general uh, spoke about this gentleman, I'll never forget my life, and I, I raised my hand. And uh, the general said, okay, yes. And I stand up and I said, one. I said, uh, I'm with boss, I come from Holland. Ah, that's nice, he said. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. He said, go ahead. You know, you are as green as green as you are. <laughs> and I said, well, if you are a third degree and you don't know the patterns, can you become a fourth degree? <laughs> and then I said, please sit down. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, well, 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 well. I was this, I was so ignorant. I was so stupid. <laughs> I was so green. <laughs> But I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't keep quiet, you know, because a few weeks before we had the national training in London and, and, and we were there all training and I know he, he didn't know the, the purpose. Right. Well, that was my, my first contact with the general. Of course, you forget about me. Yeah. That was 1973. Then in 1976, we had a European championship. He was there, but he didn't know about me. But we met in Canada in 1982. Because in 1982, I brought the Dutch team to fight in Canada, in Quebec, Quebec City, on an invitation tournament by Grandmaster um, Tranteric One. So I brought Hank Meyer, Chris Hoofman, Paino Tapilato, Walter Bone, and I think it was another one, I don't, uh, uh, another guy, and myself. So we went to New York, uh, to Quebec. And uh, so we did uh, the, the, the tournament, and the first day, we had only special techniques and some breaking and we win everything. And the second day, no, the first day. And then we had an argument with special techniques because we had one guy, uh, Harry Van Eyendal was the name, Harry Van Eyendal. He could jump very high, he had a very high front kick. So he, he we were in, in that uh, division. So he broke the board. Because at that time we broke the board. We didn't. Now we moved the board. We broke the board. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there was another guy from from Canada. He was a national coach of Canada. He was Alain Beignet. He's very known now. He's the coach of the WTF team in Canada. But anyhow, he was at that time coach of uh, competitor, and he was very small. But also, also he broke the board. He got jumped very high. So Grandmaster Pargunte, late Grandmaster Pargunte. He said, the winner is Canada. He said, no. <laughs> I went to him, he said, no. He said, who are you? I said, I said I'm Wim Boss. I'm coach of the Dutch team and I don't accept. I said, I'm Grandmaster Park. I said, I don't care who you are. I said to him, if you are master or grandmaster, I said, we go through the rules. These are the rules. If you show me where it's written that the guy who's smaller and also breaks is the winner, it's okay for me. It's not written in the rule. And the rule is written that they have to break the board, one of those at the highest they can. Yeah, so he, he, he took me like this. Right. Yeah, he took, he took me like that. I said, you better not touch me. So I did like this. It happened twice. And then he said, okay, let's go to the general. Okay, let's go to the general. So we went to the general. I said, take one. And he started to talk in Korean, of course, with the general. And I said, sorry, gentlemen. I don't know, I, I was really, really angry and really ignorant. Many times I'm ignorant, okay, but anyhow, I fight for my students. And I said, I don't understand what you're talking about. And, uh, but the general said to him, we had to go back and do one more time the jumping. He did not accept the, the position of Grandmaster Park. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, I, at that moment, I was not very friendly with Grandmaster Park, but it, after the tournament, we were friends. We, we got okay. more friendly because yeah, he knew that I was right. So that was good. 
So from that moment on, I always had a very good relation with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know, sir, sorry, you have to understand, and, and maybe you know very well also in your career, in those times, we were, we were nothing. We were treating like not, nobody. Yeah. Because they were the masters, they were the Korean masters. But someone, I stood up to them. I, I always have done so. Yeah. I also, also always stood up against the North Koreans when they did something that was no good. There are many, many stories about that, of the people that are still, let's say, also grandmasters now from England, from they are all over the world. They know the stories. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, otherwise you, you felt nobody was going to say anything. They were just... Yeah, exactly. You accept that's it. No way. Forget about it. But somebody needed to speak, speak up. And that came from you, sir. Yeah. I, you know, I was considered the, the rebel. <laughs> I was the, the rebel in those times. I was the rebel. Yeah, I had arguments with Grand Master Lee. I had many arguments because they wanted to treat us like children. I'm not a child. I'm also a practitioner of Taekwondo that trains every day. They put my efforts, that tries to be, be gentle with the people. And I want you to do the same with me. Doesn't matter what kind of degree you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you loud and clear, sir. Um, so you, you uh, were you given the task of creating the, the fifth category um, for the uh, pre-arranged sparring? Okay, you, you need to, you want to know the story, of course. <laughs> there's, also, there's also a story. So, General Che, he didn't like the sparring, yeah? Because, you know, in any IAC we had with, uh, with the general in the past, there, it was only pattern. It was never anything else, only pattern. Okay, with all respect. But we do also something else. We also fight. Okay, this is sports. I mean, sometimes people have a difficulty to understand what is Taekwondo. What is Taekwondo? Taekwondo has two parts. There is a traditional part, and we follow the traditional part because General Che, he created it. And I follow that fully, 100%. Yeah, at the best as I can. But the other kind, other part, is the sports part. That's my part. It's not his part. Nobody's part. It's your part, it's my part. I can do with it what I want. So nobody can tell me that I do good or I do wrong. It's my part. And that what one day I said to the general like that, I said to him, sir, that the sparring, that's not your part. And he looked at me and he said to me, what do you mean with that? He said, no, sir. He said, we go to the IAC with you with all respect and we do the patterns. That's it, three days patterns. You never, never something else. So if we, if we talk about something else, about breaking or special techniques or sparring, that's our part. We feel, we feel that part. Uh, oh, okay, well, anyhow. He, he, he swallowed it down. But then in, in 2000, year 2000, he called me. He said, uh, I want you to come to, to Vienna, to the, to the Draugrasse, because I, I want to have a talk with you about, uh, about the rules, about this and that. So finally, 2001, I went. I went there, I came there, I sit down, we talk. And he said, uh, he wanted to, this sparring, he, he wanted to have something else with the sparring. I did not understand at that moment that he wanted to just eliminate the free sparring. I, I didn't get it at that moment. I got it after some time we were talking. Yeah. And, uh, he said, I want you to make uh, the rules for the traditional sparring. So we have something different in ITF that others do not have. Yeah. Uh, so it's okay. I was very proud, of course, that I was. Uh, the, the person in charge for that. So I make the rules. Then in that uh, same year, we had a, I think we had an ISC in Germany. So I, I, I make a performance together with Grandmaster uh, Panos Jalamas from, from Greece. We did a performance together and the people really liked it. And it was a big hit. Yeah. So, okay, so the time passes, uh, I modify a little bit the rules, this and that, and so on and so on. So it comes then to uh, 2001. In July, we had the World Championships in, in Rimini. That what I have been organized and put two years of, of, of work in that. So we had four demonstrations, four teams. We had uh, Argentina, we had uh, England with the uh, Master Lear and uh, 
come last uh, Donato um, uh, Nargizzi. We had two from Italy and another two, anyhow. So they did the uh, pre arranged sparring in the World Championships in Rimini. I never saw the people standing up and applauding about the performance. It was, it was really fantastic. But in general, he did not like it. He no. walked off. He walked off. Because oh. my wife said to me, said the general is, is, is leaving, he's going to the VIP rounds, uh, lounge. Said, well, what can we do about it? <laughs> but he did, I think he didn't like it because it was not his. He did not do because it, it was me, and, or not me, of course, it was the people that were involved that they were preparing the, the, this, uh, this demonstration. It, it was really fantastic. I mean, it's still on, on the internet. You can see the 2001 World Championships in Rimini. That was a big hit. It was the only one that we were all together. Yes, yes. All, all together. It was only one adult per division, per category. And we had 750 compared. It was the biggest even ever held in ITF until now. I mean, not because of the numbers, because of the, the status of competitors. And we had 70 countries, never had any 70 countries, anyone. Yeah, yeah. So still, for me, it's still the big, biggest championship, not because I organized them, but these are the facts. Yes, yes. But he did not like it. So it was banned. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the general passed away in, 19, in 2002 in June 2002, so we picked it up again and we introduced it again in the next World Championships. So that yeah. is a little bit the story about the field story. I, I, I still think it's no good. What we are doing, uh, I think uh, what we are doing is we have too many rules for the pre-arranged sparring, but I'm not in charge anymore. I'm not in any committee of the ITF. I have no power to any decision. So for me, it's okay. But still for me, what I see I don't like it, and uh, I think there, the committees uh, should think about it to make it better. I see in the other ITF they do it with three people, something like a self-defense, which is uh, which I like very much. And yeah. I see, for yeah. example, in karate they have the bunkai, which is superb. So I think uh, we should think about it because we have the quality of the people that can do everything. So yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe we can change the rules a little bit in the future, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that, sir. Yeah, that was uh, that was some story. About yeah, and, uh, I have a lot of stories, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for sharing so much um, for me and all the listeners, obviously, as well. Um, it's fantastic and fascinating to hear the history that you have and uh, the plant you've played in, in these changes. And, and uh, in some way, the the risks you've had to take personally, I guess, for, for making these changes happen. Yeah, it, it, of course, it, it was always in agreement with other people, of course, yeah? because when I was the tournament director in the last years of my career in, in the ITF, we always had uh, one time per year, all the committee, the, the umpire committee five and the five from the tournament committee, we came to Benidorm for one week to talk, to, to talk about how was the world champion? Because it was always after the world champion or world cup. So we came together for one week together. ITF paid all the expenses, it was really good. We had a really good time together. So we talk about how did it go? What, where we, we, what we did we do wrong? What was, what was good about it? Where we have to implement more time or efforts, whatever. So th that was always really good. I don't know if they still do that. I don't think so, but I think that this is something really important because let's say, that the, um, the competition is, is something you, you can, it's, it's the best thing there is. I mean, I mean, the ISC, the I, all, the, all the, 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 the seminars that are there in the world, of course, they are all good. It's all perfect, no, 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 nothing, no doubt about it, but the competition is, it's, it's the mirror. You know, everybody look at the, at the competition, how you are organized, how many electronic systems you have, how, how does it work, how you have the draw, are you have do you have the visibility that everybody in the world, what well, doesn't matter which IT it is, can see how many people we have in the categories. They can see the draws. I mean, this is for me the most important thing, not to hide anything. Doesn't matter that sometimes we have a world championship with less people. Doesn't matter, it can happen. But we need to show the, the, the world who we are, what we are doing. That's for me something that, 
it's important. So everybody knows what's going on. Never have to tell a lie or to 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 hide something. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it seems like the, these these values you hold within yourself, you've had that honesty, the, the integrity that's that's been with you throughout your career, your life. I'm not a perfect person. I'm just a human being having also a lot of uh, good things. And there was also some bad, bad things uh, in myself, for sure. Of course, my character, mm, I get maybe sometimes I got a F angry, maybe too fast or whatever, but maybe in that time was needed to get the people on the right track. Of course, now I'm getting older. I have a little bit more experience in life. I have done 80 IICs with may maybe more than 25,000 black belts on the floor. So I know a little bit more about to, to handle things. But yes, of course, it, we are human beings. Uh, it's the same in the family life. But when we talk about the ITF tenants, uh, I think they are very low with a lot of people. And we have to blame ourselves. Eh? Because if we talk about 15 or 16 or 20 ITFs in the world, then we have to have a good look in, inside ourselves. There is really something wrong with all, all about us. Eh? So why, why I choose to be here or why I choose to be there or why I go there to get a belt more, to get a position more, does it, does it make your life better? I don't think so. We need to get back to the roots. We need to get back to have one ITF all together, all. And of course, that will not possible that, that, we, have an, that we have a position. Also, I have no position anymore in ITF. I've been working for the ITF for over 25 years, but I have no position, no. but I'm in the ITF because my federation is in the ITF. I know, I think this ITF is a good ITF, but of course, also I do not agree with everything, but it doesn't matter because that's not my point of view anymore. I have to agree, uh, agree with, with the terms of life and that is to enjoy it. Enjoy to go to the, to the, to the, to the gym, to practice, to enjoy the people that are with me, to enjoy my son, what he's doing, and how he's preparing, to enjoy my masters in my my masters in Italy, and enjoy when we have a big tournament that everybody's there hugging each other and have a good time together, have a good talk. That's life. It's not, life is nothing anymore about positions or uh, to, uh, your ego. Yes, let's put it aside. It doesn't matter. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's continue to help people. You know, for example, now. Just yesterday, we finished to make the agreement about the Asian game, Asian championships yes. that we have yeah, next yeah. year in May. So I'm working on this project with the organizers there, having the ITF involved. I mean, uh, there will be some ITF uh, directors uh, present there, help, helping, being there to make the event going well. So this is still some things that I, I'm involved with in the Asian uh, territory. I'm still working a little bit there. And uh, that's it. And I just want to f enjoy my free time. That's it. Yeah, absolutely, sir. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, uh, yes, yeah, so the... I brought you out, 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 out of all of the track. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much. No, no, it's wonderful because um, yeah, I mean, like you said, your life now is is much different, and uh, you spend time with your son. Um, yeah, a lot. And. Uh, People know how good he's become uh, as a practitioner and a ch champion. Uh, how good would you say your son is? I, I never had a student as good as, as him. I had, uh, I had many good students, but uh, um, not because he is my son, of course, but as I said before, I had many very good students. Yeah. But uh, the efforts he puts uh, training to twice a day, and uh, you know, I know how much he puts inside. And it's not only about training, but it's, it's just about also the mind, everything is behind. And yesterday evening after we had the training together, we came home, uh, he, he's living by himself now, uh, the last four months, he's not living at, at our house anymore, but he's very close, but he came with me home here. We have a, a dinner together. We were talking about his future what we are going, what he wants to go, what he wants to do, because, you know, it, nice to go to the gym every day, twice a day, but we also have to study. Yes. So 
you know, we decided a little bit together that he is going to study more and training a little bit less. So I let's say the the approach to be a the real top competitor, we need to put a little bit, not to the side, but a little bit down. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But there are there are other things also very important in life in this moment. So, but for the rest, things are going well. Let's say like that. And together, you travel, you teach together. Well, we have been doing some seminars together in Argentina, for example. We had we were there for almost two weeks. Two weeks. It was two years ago before the COVID. And it was that's really nice to be with your son going around the world, of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in February, I have everything. Everything is going well. I have a seminar with with Master Lear, together with Timothy, coming to England. So I'm waiting for you to come too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure that uh, everybody is, is welcome. And with with Master Lear seminar, so I will be there teaching together with with my son, having a good time. Meeting friends, old friends, and just being busy. Yeah. So I was uh, very privileged to be in your presence as uh, an IIC in England, in Dorking. Oh, do oh yes, I remember Dorking. that one. Yeah. yeah. And obviously the late Tran Quan was there as well. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic uh, IIC. I, I tested for fifth degree there. Wow. I met wow. Myself, obviously, uh, and experienced your training alongside very great practitioners uh, that were there with us at the time yeah very memorable and uh, very nice yeah. to experience firsthand your teaching sir your inspiration thank you thank you you know there are a, a lot of so very good competitors and practitioners around in the world and uh, we also have to have a look at inside ourselves now we have to step, make a step back i mean the youngsters that, 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 that's 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 they have to take our place. I mean, we cannot be there for, for always. Give them something to do. I mean, we have so many good competitors in any ITF, but okay, let's talk about ITF. We have Lillian Dule, we have Suska, we have uh, Farigou, uh, Sylvia Farigou. We have so many good uh, ex-competitors or still competitors that could be in a committee that could teach around the world and show their ability. I mean, people need to have a place. I mean, ex-competitors is like a football players. You know, what do you do with uh, Ronaldo or Messi when they stop? Uh, okay, okay, they manage, they manage yeah. because they have the money. But there are so many, so many people in sports. Yeah, they can't, they can't do the sports anymore because of time, because of uh, economical situation. That's terrible. That that people cannot be used because of these factors. I think I think a world organization needs to think about their 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 affiliates. That can be a good one or or, or a better one, or an excellent one, or a perfect one, doesn't matter. If there are people in the world that can can be some do something well in the future, we need to give them a chance. That, that's my opinion. Yeah. I would do so if I would have the position. So you're happy with life in Italy? With, uh, uh, yes, uh, you know, I'm a pensioner. <laughs> I'm a pensioner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pensioner, but... Uh, uh, I, 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 I fully enjoy now because I, I just, I have a good, I mean, I, I think when you have a steady relation and you have, now my daughter is coming back home from Barcelona, uh, staying, coming back ho home to us, but then of course we are going to find a place for her because children should be not with their parents, they have to have their own life. So we do everything to make it affordable for them to have their own accommodation, their own apartment, whatever. So yeah, then I'm still here with my wife. We have our dog, of course, because our dog, he needs a lot of attention. He needs to walk, he yeah. needs to run. Yeah, so yeah. In the morning, in the morning, I go to the park. Before I go to the gym, I go to the park again. So yes, yeah. Now, now life is... So what would, what would be your favorite time? So was it the seven times Dutch champion in those days or? running the big tournaments and making them so good or teaching? Um, um, or... Everything has something really, really good in it. I think it was difficult to say because it was parts of my life. In the beginning, I was tournament director, umpire director. 
And then I, I became in the IIC. I also still was doing the other one because at that time uh, I was in many committees. I did a lot of jobs for ITR, but of course then we had more people coming up and uh, the, the, the board of directors was had other people that could do the job. So let's say in the, in, 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 in the back in time, to be a coach was good. Then I became the tournament director for ITF, umpire director for ITF. That was a brilliant time too, because I had everything in my hands. You know, I could put, put everything, the strolls I had here, I could do what I want. Yeah, yeah. That was a good time too. And I had really good people working with me. Really good people like uh, Master Van der Heuvel, uh, Master Katz, uh, too, many, too many names to mention that are still working for, I, for, for this ITF, let's say like that. But in the IAC, the teaching, I think that was something really with, with I liked. I liked, I liked the IAC my way, okay? It doesn't mean that I like the whole IAC. I like my way yeah. of teaching yeah. in IAC and teaching what I was teaching. So, because everybody has his own style of teaching. It doesn't mean I like that style or I like that style. I like what I was doing myself, I like that. Yeah. So, then everybody has his own way of doing the things and that you can agree with or disagree with. And it doesn't mean that I disagree with it, but yeah. maybe that's not, that's not, not my way. That's it. But I had a, I had, I had a good time in that, in that time, in that also, yes. Excellent. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> you were saying, didn't you, that the, the tradition and the sport and the sport is, is is your way my way your way yeah to come back to that because i think there are other people maybe listening to us I, I want to be very clear what is a martial artist yeah okay and that that we have to follow the the principles of taekwondo and the tennis of, of taekwondo okay then i have to come back to the human being because if we talk about the tennis or whatever of taekwondo then we have to look them they are very deep somewhere in the ground because as we have 15 ISCs, uh, 15 ITFs in the world, I think there's all these tenets. I'm very sorry about it. Then I keep my tenets from myself and I try to follow them. But what I see around, what's going around, I mean, you lose some people just, just to go for a degree more in another organization. And yeah, we have people that are 30 years with us yeah. And just because they didn't get a, got a position, they went away. And then we talk about tennis, about loyalty, whatever. Do what you want. So the martial art part is something. Okay, we, we follow our founder. We follow what's written in all our books, what we have about Taekwondo, all the patterns to be precise and to be, to understand what we are doing in the pattern, because this is another thing. I think 80% of the people that perform a pattern do not understand what they are doing. They just to make moves, yeah. but they, they don't really get the point of the application of the pattern. That's for me the most important thing, the application of the pattern. So this is the master art part and we follow that. I like it. I also do my patterns every day. Some patterns, I do a few patterns, not all because I'm getting old. So I cannot do all of them. I do a few, but the sports part. The sports part is so different now because you go to YouTube and you can see, what can I do to do the warming up? What can I do to make the stretching? We didn't have that in the past because we didn't have the internet. Yeah, yeah. So you see the creativity of the people, even that I see my son, I see my instructors, they are far ahead of me, far ahead of me. I don't have that anymore. I, I have my way of teaching, of course, but I don't have all those things, you know, with the Tabada. And with this uh, circuit training and this, I don't have that. I don't have the knowledge. Maybe I, I missed out someone, someone there, but I have to be honest with you. Yeah. So yeah. that sports part, it's just a fantastic part. How good the people can come, how, how fast they are, yeah. How, yeah. how concentrated they are. And they have them. So for example, in my, my gym, my, my, my top competitor, we have the mental, mental trainer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have the yeah. massage once a time, once every month, a good massage. So just to be professional. Yeah. But it all comes through my son. Yeah. 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 Because he, he needed that to become the top competitor. Not yeah. only five, six times training in a week, two times a day. No, he need much more. 
you need also be to, to be followed by a doctor, nutritionist. Yeah, what do I eat? What can I do? Yes. I, I will get my weight. So I make it very professional. So that part, the sports part, is just a fantastic part. And I think, and I think it will take over in a while if we are not very uh, cautious with the, with the traditional part. Because 80% of ITF technology practitioners are children, are youngsters. Yeah. We, we left the oldies, 20% maybe left because we have the passion. We make our business maybe with Taekwondo. So we keep going, but our students, for sure also in your gym, just look 80%, 70% are children. Yeah, yeah. And so what do children want? They, they want to do the patterns? Yeah, a little bit, a little. But you want to fight? When you tell your children, with whom? Okay, yeah. go and put on your safety equipment. They run. They run to put on, on yeah. the equipment. <laughs> That's right. If you say, Chad or Kyungye, Jungi, Jungi tool. Yeah. Okay, so we have also need to be very creative to teach the patterns because the because the youngsters, they need the creativity, not only the, the that, that way, they need the creativity to perform the pattern at its best. So you need to be a good instructor, listen to the people. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah? And, and to follow courses and to be open to it. Not because I'm a nine degree, I know everything. I don't know nothing. I know nothing. If I look at other people, there's so much to learn still. Yeah, yeah, of course. And you have to be open with it, but you must train every day. You must practice every day. You must do your, your workout. Never forget one day. Yeah, yeah. Because, because you are example. Remember, if you have your dobok on and you stand in front of your, your people, doesn't matter what kind of people, if it's white belts or eight degrees or seven degrees, you stand in front of them, you must be in shape you, because people look at you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's my, that's my message. I always keep yeah. these matches. That's very important, sir. Thank you so much for sharing that because um, people hear it from you, sir. It, you know, it resonates. Uh, they can see your example, what you've created, your ability, and uh, the knowledge, and uh, it really makes. Yeah, makes, but it, 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 it becomes because there is work behind. It's yeah. not because I sit uh, on the couch and and or I sit on my chair and I look some Netflix the whole day. No, I, there's work behind. I need to go to the gym also to yeah. do my workouts. So as life goes on, you're, and you're, you're, you're physical, you get older, you cannot do the same thing, of course, than, than a youngster of, of 20 years old. Forget about it. Don't think about it that I will go and put on my safety equipment to fight my son. Forget about it. <laughs> I, I prefer to have a good coffee with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I can still teach him the, the patterns because now he's going for... The fifth degree pattern, so I'm teaching is the pattern. I still can do that. Yeah, I still yeah, yeah. teach twice a week in my gym to, to my, my elder, to his group, let's say, like that. And that, that's it. It's more than enough. More than yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic, sir. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time sitting with you here, listening to the stories and uh, receiving the, the advice and the guidance. Uh, that you've been able to share with me and all the listeners. So I greatly appreciate that, sir. Um, yeah, my, my message is always the same. And, uh, and that's it. If you want to be good at something, doesn't matter whatever, you have to put efforts. Nothing comes by itself. Or you have to be born rich. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you have rich parents will leave you everything. That's, that's maybe, that's okay then. But yeah. for the rest, if you want to become, if you want to be a good instructor, you don't have to be a super a good instructor. You still have to teach, teach well. But that means you need to do some courses. You need to study. Look at, um, I, I look at YouTube always every day. I look some some bouts, yeah, yeah, yeah. bouts, uh, sparring bouts, breaking. I look every day a little bit YouTube, just to be sharp, to remain sharp to be also, you know, to be in the social media also, to know what's going on in the world. So I can, I can keep up a little bit with the youngsters, yeah. with the ideas and the way they think. Because normally we parents, we miss out there. Yeah? Because we're getting older, we don't understand our kids anymore. Yeah, yeah. 
it's also in life is like that. And yeah. Therefore, therefore, I always say, always say, put efforts in order to gain the best. That's my message. Yeah. Whatever you do. Fantastic. I feel you're open clear, sir. And obviously, I echo that as well. Um, speaking to yourself, as I say, there's so much to learn, uh, as you say. Um, Taekwondo has things that are set and will probably be, always be like that. But as you put it, the other part is to evolve constantly, to change, to grow, to become better, faster, stronger. Yeah, and also, uh, it's, it's important to understand that the youngsters are, are not thinking as we were brought up. The youngsters think and they, they go to, 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 to the social media and they see what else they can do, okay? They, are, they, they do Taekwondo, they are loyal to Taekwondo, but they, they can see that there are also other, that the world is big. <laughs> the world is big and the world is open. Yeah, yeah. So, so don't, don't, don't tell a student, you are my student, you are my gym, and don't go anybody else, anywhere else. And I hear this story all the time. I always send my students somewhere else. Go to this instructor and see what he's doing. Go to that instructor and learn a little bit from him. And then you, you are, you're still my student, you come back to me. Yeah, yeah. If you think that this one is better, go there, it doesn't matter. You're not mine, you're, I'm just teaching you and try to make you better if it's not good enough. So this is also something that sometimes we, we want to keep everything here with us. But they feel it, they don't want that anymore. The students who don't want that, they want to have the freedom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Therefore, we have to train and practice and show them that we are can do the business. Yeah, yeah, very much. <laughs> we got to be in tip top shape. But... No, not tip top shape. I mean, For my age. I, I mean, I, I, I see around the world how many people teach, uh, teach by talking 90% and showing 10%. I'm, I'm just, I try to be different. I try to be ten, talking 10% and performing 90%. Right, right. That's my motto. So not everybody ap appreciates what I'm saying, but I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's the testament to your physical shapes there, isn't it? And you Yeah, I think so. Um... But, but what is more, what a pleasure it is, you know, to be in shape. Yeah, you yeah. still can can make, make a, a a decent sidekick. For example, I, if we still have some time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why a person that is in Taekwondo for forty years is not flexible? You have an answer. Uh, flexible, as in the splits, or flexible? Okay. Oh, so to, to make a psychic, for example, on shoulder heights. Okay. Yeah. A good psychic, yeah? Strong right. one. That is not really an excuse that should be possible, shouldn't it? Yeah. Be, my, I, I look, I mean, I have a lot of colleagues in the world, of course, not, not only in, 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 the, in, in the physician I am, but I look oh. also to the other ones, of course, because I'm always interested in what everybody's doing. Not, not my organization, but all organizations, what they are doing and who is teaching in their organization and what is their ability and mm -hmm. what do they do? And so I always think about myself, how is it possible? But even in my own federation, yeah, the people that are not flexible because most of the people are not professional. You have people that, that work the whole day. They teach three times a week. They have no, no time to do all those things that they should do, yeah. okay? But they forget one thing. Without flexibility, you get a lot of physical problems. Because if you're not very flexible, uh, let's say flexible, and you have to make a kick, every kick you make that hurts your body. Yeah, yeah. yeah because the kick has to go without a thought, you know? Yeah. If I need to think about to raise my leg and say, oh, wow, it will take some time to put the leg on because maybe it hurts my back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's something wrong with you because the kick, it, that, that's it, that's a new, has to be um, something that, that comes from nothing, from nowhere. Yes. Like a punch. Yeah. Or like a block. It, it comes because it comes. And therefore, hands and feet should be the same. It, of course, it's not the same, but should be the same. Yeah. It takes a lot of investment. So it's always about investment, efforts to make it better. Yeah. That is stretching. 
Let's do, the, let's do dynamic setting in the morning, 10 minutes in the morning, dynamic setting, and then you start your day. And so dynamic for any listeners that might be listening, that's, we talk about the leg swings. Yeah. The legs kick or the downward kick, and the, and, uh, the sideways and yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I do front, I do sideways, I do bedways. And then some just movements like this with, and to, for the hip, let's say like that. Uh, it's very simple things. I do three uh, sets of 15. So 15, 15, then three sets. And yeah. then it's about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're ready. And you feel good. Yeah. And then of course, a strength exercise, you can do your, your push-ups or you can do your abdom abdominals. It's not a 10 minutes, to 20 minutes per day, and you're, you're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, for example, when you teach and you teach the pattern, try to do the pattern with them. Do the pattern with them. You teach Chunji, do Chunji with them. Then they do one more time and you look at them. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Not, you say Chunji, Chunji, Chi, Chak, and Pupu, Pupu, pu, and you look at them. Try to do with them. And then you do what I'm going to do with them. This is a way to keep always your shape. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. And yes. That is how I like to teach as well is to do the physical uh, with them yeah also but i think also uh, the, the students appreciate when you do the pattern with them you understand yeah, yeah. Uh, because you see that, that you put the efforts to do it yeah, yeah 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 and i know a bunch of people they don't do that they just give the comments yeah 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 and that's a pity because you, you blame yourself <laughs> You can make it so easier. Yeah. Okay, I, I, of course, when they do Jiu Chia, I understand when you are 50, 60, 70 years old and there's Jiu Chia, you cannot do the pattern. Okay, you can do some, some movements of the pattern which you feel comfortable, but of course, the, the split kick or the hooking, the jumping back hooking, that, that's of course, that is, that's not for people that are 60, 70 years old. I think, I think the general Chia did not think about that when he created the Jiu Chia tool. <laughs> or Mumu <more> tool. <laughs> and then the thing about, oh, there's also people in the world that are that are older, that are elder than 20 or 30. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 these patterns are too difficult. This is not pattern for for people, for normal people. No, no. An excellent competitor to make those those patterns working well. Yeah. No, of course. It's after, after you, you also, you have to think about it with all your colleagues to make some changes there. <laughs> 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 to make it, I mean, for us, for us oldies, no? And I, I, I also, also talk about it with other masters and grandmasters. What is there for us now? What, what will be there? We have no seminars for grandmasters. Okay, I get 69, okay, this, this, this yeah. week. Yeah. What, I like to train with my friends. Who are my friends? Doesn't mean that in my federation. We are friends, all the world. I have many friends in England, all over the world that are not with us, but okay, they are, they are still grandmas. Why don't we come all together once a year and just have a good time to get and train together? Put our ego aside. Then we don't have any ego. We just come together once, all the grandmasters, all the nine degrees from all over the world, all friends, no politics, nothing. Just come together and just have a good time in a nice environment. Bring our wives, they can go shopping and we go training. Yeah, well, what a great idea. Yeah, go and organize this, Master <laughs> David. Organize it. Okay, sir. Organize it. Open to all grandmasters. No obligation to all grandmasters to come to, to this, uh, let's say, four or five days in a nice environment in a nice hotel where we are with 100 grandmasters from all over the world, doesn't matter which organization, and we have a very great time together. That would be something fantastic. This is one of my biggest wishes I still have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is one of my biggest wishes. Do other people know that, sir? I mean, they will now, but uh, <laughs> do other nice degrees hear you say this? Oh, uh, I, I think I, I could start to think about it, to organize something maybe in Italy to get the whole world. You know, the problem is there are so many events, so yeah. many events around and it's how you, where you put it, but and I think it needs at least a two years uh, advance announcement. Uh, 
but yes. it should it should be done really it should be done because i have so many friends that we were together let's say about 2001 we were all together 2002 we split yeah yeah, but yeah. 2002 we split in three in three organizations how many grandmasters how, how many masters are now grandmasters and and we have no contacts anymore it's a pity because before we were all together all together yeah yeah so maybe I'm going to work on a, on a, on a project yeah. to have all these guys and all this uh, whatever all together and have a good time and show the world who, who we really are because if all the ITF would be one, I think we would be as big as the WT. Yeah, for sure. And I hear this a lot, sir, the people I've spoken to that ultimately they would like it to be one again. So there is a desire, but... So what, what, what is the main problem in your opinion? What's the main problem in your opinion? Um, for, the, for the actual, I guess, what would the one be? What would the one be? Would it be an administration? Would it, would it just be, would everything have to go through the one? Or Well, there could be one, let's say, ITF that has many uh, sector sections, yeah. many divisions. Yeah, yeah. But they are all linked to the to one, which has, let's say, a CEO or a chairman, with some members in there, and they, and 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 those people are those people who are in charge, to get us into the guides or to the Olympics. Yeah. Because if we talk about ITF organizations, there are many. Some are very good. Some are very big. Okay. If if we keep being alone, we will not go anywhere. And that's not that's not fair for our youngsters. Not fair for the future for our youngsters. It may be fair for the moment because we are, let's say, elder people. But for the for the future, there's something that needs to think. People should think about it. And I think the youngsters should be a little bit more stronger in those things. Yeah, because what, what's the, what's the main problem there? Yeah? The main problem is that maybe, okay, all this organization, of course also mine, of course, where I am, and they are all very well structured. They have very good rules and regula regulations. They, keep, they can keep going, that's yeah, not yeah. a problem. But so, they all can form one board. So an umbrella kind of. Yeah, yeah. like an umbrella. Yeah. yeah, maybe can be one president of each group can be in that umbrella. And they, they try to make something, you know? Yeah, yeah. And also, we should start that every ITF that has a world championship should open it. Yeah. To everybody, or, or maybe a World Cup. So we we have now the World Cup in 2022 in 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 Marib in, in uh, Copper, in Slovenia. I'm involved in that in organization together with Master Thomas Rada, and we open it to 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 other organizations. So we hope that some people will come and and join us. We are yeah. not stealing nobody. We just want to offer them also possibility. To take part in our World Cup, so if this could be done on, on world level and with other organizations, then we could have a chance to become something really big in the world. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And like you say, you, then you can justify the uh, the Olympics. Yeah, and of course, the Olympics is, is, is yeah. WT is there, and uh, we we will never get in there. It's not possible if we are so have all these divisions. That's not possible. Yeah. And and everybody knows that. So I think maybe some some people should start to think a little bit on a different level. Yeah, yeah. I I I really would see a super big ITF where our students, especially also, of course, and now I talk about my son, would have the possibility. Right. And to, to join an Olympic Olympics. Yeah, yeah. And there are some other federations in uh, sports combats that are going in the right uh, direction. So the martial arts uh, uh, federations like Taekwondo, Karate, and so on and so on, they have to be very careful. Yeah, yeah. 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 Don't, sit, don't sit on your chair and wait. <laughs> be active. Think about the future. The future is, is goes fast now. Everything goes fast. No, you're right there, sir. Yeah. Okay. I, I hope I, I did not uh, 
put any blame. I, I don't want to put blame on anybody, of course, but uh, I have my vision about things because I, I, I have it at home every day. This vision, when I talk to my son or when I talk to my other masters that also think in, in my, my way, it, it's really a pity. Could be done. We should move a little bit more united yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully one day, sir, you know. Yeah, they have to hurry. They have to hurry up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. It's true. I mean, um, obviously, yeah. Uh, this will be included in our podcast, so maybe people will start to listen. And and there is other people saying the same things, you know. Uh, you know, Master David, in the martial art world, nobody talks. That's 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 a given thing. Number one, yeah. Yeah, number one, people do not talk. People like to, of course, criticize, like to talk to each other, but do not talk to those people where they should talk to. That that's a given thing, and I know all my life is like that. I I have it on my on my shoulders so many times. So then it's, that that that's the point. But there should be some, you know, in the world there has always been some revolution somewhere. You know, can you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This will be a revolution in ITF too. Yeah. Because it, it's it's just a pity, you know, that we that we move, that someone move from here to there, and so on and so on. And it's, uh, it's just a really pity. Do you see the same thing happening? Continuation of the similar kind of events that there's some period of calm and then people go and yeah but uh, no, also let's say a competitor becomes a world champion in itf yeah, people say which itf so we have uh, 10 world champions uh, until 63 kilogram or 69 or whatever it, should, it would be nice no to have one world championship oh, yeah. organized by all the federations yeah and the best of each category from each organization will join in this yeah. mega mega event uh that that would be something uh that would be yeah, because the, uh, whole, the whole world will be so surprised by that in boxing uh, you know you have these belt holders don't you wbc wbo wba ivf but sometime they bring them together and they have somebody has them all don't they yeah, also this in, in of course in, in the World Boxing Organization that those federations have been been made because it's just about money. That's about money. Yeah, because they, they that one has a better sponsor, yeah. or that one has a, a a perfect sponsor that gives millions, for example, whatever. And and therefore it, it starts. But in Taekwondo, we do not have that. No. In, in the WT they have Samsung, but we don't we, maybe or I don't know who they have now, but anyhow. In ITF, uh, we, we do not have this mega sponsors like uh, whatever, Coca-Cola yeah. or whatever, or Pepsi, yeah. whatever. Uh, and if we would have a very big umbrella that goes to a, a big sponsor says, okay, we are 2 million of practitioners in this ITF. Yeah. And it was, oh, 2 million, wow. Let's invest some money in you, you know? Yeah. But if you go there and you say, well, we have 70 countries or 60 countries affiliated with top team, then it's become very difficult. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It will take time, of course. It will, it, I will not maybe be there when this happens, but hopefully it will happen one day that this, this, this is possible. It's, it's, this is also another wish. My, this grandmaster's business that come all together is more or less the same than to you, unite that. Some of these big ITF, these ITFs in one big uh, umbrella body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, we will see. Obviously, it, it's more than just just a wish, you know. <laughs> but reality is always something different. Huh? <laughs> I have a lot of wishes all the time, but then my wife says, "Shut up." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, just to maybe to finish this conversation, there are two things in yourself. You are a martial, 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 martial artist and you are a very creative person. Okay, 
Martial art is, you are also a character a little bit, but, but it, it's all set. You know, this is the pattern, this has to be done, these are the heights, there is a power, this is a sine wave, a little bit of sine wave. Uh, I don't call it sine wave, I call it, I call it bouncing of the knee, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because I think people get very confused with the sine wave business, anyhow, yeah, yeah. because it's just a very natural uh, flow of movement that you flow from one in the other one. Okay, doesn't matter. And then you have the other part, that's, that's your part, that's the most beautiful part, the creative part. Yeah. But you can do what you want and you can learn so many things there. And that's, if you can integrate it together, then it's okay, that's fantastic. And I see there are some instructors in the world that do that and they're also not uh, afraid to show it on their uh, Facebook uh, and so on and so on. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those people that show that, there are also people that are very physical fit, they're very mentally very strong, they are very creative. And they, they, that's what I really love and, and appreciate and I really respect that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Nick, uh, would love to visit Italy and well, I have visit, I've been to Rimini actually with my parents so many years ago. Uh, my wife is very keen to come to uh, Italy. We've never been to Rome. Come uh, to the Roma Open. We have the Roma Open in March. Okay. Come, okay. Come, come join. Bring your students. Have a good time. Well, thanks so much, sir, for sharing everything. Okay. We keep in contact. Yes, sir. I'll be in touch soon, yeah? Thank you. Bye-bye, Master David. Take Thank one. You, Take one. Bye-bye.